so I'll, I'll tell you the categories of the, of the sprouts and I actually um, put them in a way where I'll go from um, the ones that are very nutritious to the ones that are super mega nutritious on a nutrient dense scale. So uh, the first category is beans and legumes. So those would be lentils, those would be white beans, red beans, lima bean, beans, uh, pinto beans, and chickpeas, they're my favorite. So that category is really, I mean, enzymes are the really big deal. So all of these sprouts, you know, like I know to you guys, I don't really need to talk about enzymes much. That's what you're here for, that's what you know about for food. So uh, enzymes, you, that's what they're absolutely packed with. But what this category is actually very well known for is its iron content and its protein content. Another big thing too is that category of sprouts is very full of soluble fiber. So to some people that's good news, to others it's not. I mean soluble fiber helps you digest and eliminate, but for some people whose digestion doesn't work you know, as sharply, uh, it could cause some flatulence. So that's that's fine. And you know, and I'm not saying this category of sprouts is absolutely amazing for everybody. If it causes gas, gas is toxic. Just listen to your body. It might not be right for you at that point in time. So you might, uh, you know, you, you might decide that okay, it doesn't feel right. I'm feeling bloated. I'm feeling gassy or something. Just forget about the category. Try something else. Eventually, and I've seen this happen in a few people as well. That goes away. So once you train. Um, you know, training your intestines. Uh, again, the, so that was um, the six categories. Category number five is, is another form of beans, but they're a little bit different. So it's mung beans and azuki beans. And I'll actually pass these around as well. So if you want to just pass these around. The mung beans are the green ones, azuki beans are the red ones. The tiny little um, things in there are also uh, fenugreek. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Now that category of sprouts, um, <coughs> are really incredible for your cells as well and also they're very high in protein. In fact, the dry, uh, the dry bean has, uh, has about 25% protein. As soon as you start sprouting it, that goes up to 40, 45 and even 50%. So that's, that's a very, very big difference. Uh, um, category number four uh, is, is a sprout that's got a category all on its, all of its own and it's fenugreek. So in the bowl that's passing around, there's the tiny little ones, that's fenugreek. Um, fenugreek is mostly known for its um, diaphoretic properties. That basically means that it makes you sweat a lot. That's a very good thing. That's very good for uh, for detoxing. So if you know if, if you if you're on a detox, so if you want to detox, go for fenugreek. That's um, category number three. That's going to be grains. And yeah, the back row. Back row. Back row. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, actually, when I was talking about beans and the, um, the category number six, um, I mentioned white beans and you know and red beans. So if you want to just pass them around, and actually taste them too. You know, once they're going around, just taste them. Just grab a sprout and just see what it tastes like. You might not like it. You might, you know, you might enjoy to put it in salads, into crackers, um, into. Um, I don't know, smoothies, juices, pastes, sauces, so you might not like, like it on its own. And that, that's fine. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to like the taste on its own. It goes with many, many different things. Grains. Actually, within the grains category, there's also two categories within that as well. The, I'll go through some of them. The grains uh, build amazing energy resources in your cells. And also, what they're very well known for is enhancing libido in the males and um, and increasing fertility in the females. So we have grains. Uh, grains. Okay. Which grains? What's that? Which of the grains? Uh, okay, so um, what are these again? Uh, those green beans and red beans. Oh, that's that's all they're called, and there's plenty that you can buy here. I literally got them from a supermarket, and they've got rows and rows and rows of them. Um, Many, many available. So, so the grains you go for uh, wheat, buckwheat, uh, rye, spout, oats. You know that that category are very nutritious, 
Um, but if you want to go for the most alkalizing, the best grains ever are the really little ones. So you'll have quinoa, you've got millet, uh, you've got amaranth, teff. So all of those grains, you go for the very, very small ones to give you, you know, the, the most nutrition. What's really interesting too, those tiny little grains, even if you cook them, the molecular structure doesn't change very much. Enzymes go, but the molecular structure doesn't change much. And, you know, make that part of your diet as well. I mean, you're not going to be eating bowls of it on their own. You're going to mix it with food that's full of enzymes anyway, with living food. So if you want something that more dense, if you want, you know, if, if you want maybe something warm, that's totally fine. Um, sprout them first and then cook them. So and I'll, I'll get onto the sprouting a little bit later. Okay, so category number two, moving all the way up. Uh, that's going to be seeds of vegetables, so small vegetable seeds. Those would be things like um, arugula, uh, what's um, this? clover, uh, definitely clover. There's um, what grows here in abundance. Um, the, the green stuff, Mom, what did we put in our smoothie? Alfalfa. <laughs> sure. Alfalfa, yeah. <laughs> um, yep. So arugula, alfalfa, you've got broccoli, kale, so clover we already mentioned, radish, you know, cabbage, those tiny little seeds, those are like absolute nutrient power, powerhouses. They are just bursting with vitamins. It's, it's unreal how the difference between a seed and a grown vegetable to a sprout is unreal. For example, radish. If you if you break down the nutrient content, and if you say, you know, if you're looking at, say, pro vitamin A, the the nutritional uh, international nutritional units of that sprout is about 350 to 400, compared to an actual radish that's been grown in your garden for three months. The international nutritional units of that, of pro vitamin A, is 10. Wow. That's, that's, I mean, the difference is so giant. That's why you can't actually, your body can't take too many sprouts. It knows when enough is enough. It, you know, when, when your body has enough of the nutrients, so you just go, okay, you know, I can't, I can't have too much. That's, I'm already full from that. So that's all it means. Now, the big reveal, the group number one, the most nutritious, the most amazing sprouts that you should have in abundance add to absolutely everything is um, wheatgrass. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking a lot about that. Snow pea shoots, okay. sunflower shoots, and buckwheat lettuce. So you've got four in there. Um, I've got examples for you. Now, what did we not pass around? So this is chickpeas and... Sunflower? Um, that's snow pea shoots. Oh, snow pea. Mm -hmm. Don't eat that sauce. No, so when they're ready, when they're about 10 centimeters, you rip off. I mean, they're your greens, you know, you put them in, uh, in your smoothies and juices, whatever. They're going to be very green. The reason why they're so powerful is because of the chlorophyll. And I know that Peter already spoke about chlorophyll twice, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but I think one thing is worth mentioning is, I mean, chlorophyll, the molecule of chlorophylls is very similar to human blood molecules. So when you're actually intaking chlorophyll, it's like having a healthy blood transfusion. It's very, very powerful. What chlorophyll does is it, um, is it actually brings all, like, all the oxygen through your cells into your blood as well. So it's a great oxygen carrier as well. There's so much in them. Like, I, I can't even go through everything. It's not just your A, B, C, D vitamins. I mean, it, it just goes really, really deep. The, especially sunflower and snow pea shoots, and I'm really big on them. I grow them in um, in London like all the time. And basically, the reason why they're so amazing is because they actually have a complete protein. And that complete protein comes in the form of the nine essential uh, amino acids, the ones that our body can't produce. And to give you an example of how that works, if you can imagine like a bead necklace, around you, so that's, that's the protein, and that bead necklace consist, consists of many, many different beads, all the different amino acids. So when, you know, the, the cow, when it eats the grass, it produces the perfect protein, it gets all the amino acids that the cow needs, and forms, forms it into the protein that's perfect for the cow. Then we as humans 
in the cow, our body, you know, has so much stress on our body trying to break up that protein into all the different amino acids. That's why it takes three days to process the meat uh, inside of us. It breaks it up, breaks it up, breaks it up, and you know, makes up our own protein from all the amino acids. But by the time it does it, we're exhausted. We're so tired. It's so much work that it takes. Um, so basically, imagine just having the greens, starting right from scratch, all the amino acids on their own. It takes pretty much no energy. That's why we have so much energy to, you know, for all the other things. It makes up its own bead inside of us, the most perfect one for us. So, and that's what the snowy shoots and the sunflower greens have. Um, the, the perfect amino acid structure. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you how to do it. So I mean, how to sprout.